How long do you think those bodies have been dead for? I don't know, pretty long time there. Pretty dried out. What's your best guess on the cause of death, Captain? Buried. Alive. Paleontology, which is the study of ancient life, including fossils, is a lot like CSI forensics. The only difference is that the bodies are millions of years older. They don't easily reveal their killers, nor give up the secrets to their lives. But with a little bit of science, I bet we can dig up some answers. of the geologic record in North America, fossilization began here in ancient seas. And the two main ingredients were life forms and sedimentation. And today, hundreds of millions of years later, those sediments are today's sedimentary rocks. And the scientists who explore their secrets are called paleontologists. Let's go and join some at a dig. So we're heading up to Carboniferous rock formations to look for fossils, 350 million years old. The area that we're about to go see is, uh, was from that, from the inland sea? From, it was right, in everything in this area was submerged by a large inland sea, shallow water environment, uh, a lot like Florida or the Great Barrier Reef of today. What is required for a fossil to be formed? A fossil needs to be buried very quickly. Um, and the best place to bury something very quickly is anywhere where there's water. The offshore, near shore environments. So there's a lot of wave action, there's a lot of sediment around there. You're gonna get things buried very quickly. Once it's buried, the original material begins to seep out and is replaced by minerals. So fossils are actually rocks. Oh, they're, okay. they're exact copies of the, living, of so the, the living things they replicate. So they're not actually the bones? They're not actually the bones. They're a mineralized replacement of bone. Oh, okay. In the case like of the something like a dinosaur, yes. And in the case of something like a seashell, it's the same thing. You're gonna get a replacement of the original seashell material. So because, because fossilization needs rivers and needs to be buried quickly, it seems like there would be a real disparity between which animals become fossilized, which ones we actually discover. Exactly, exactly. Animals that tend to live near uh, watery environments, either in the ocean, uh, by the shore, or in river systems, or die there, those are the ones that are going to get fossilized. Okay. Uh, if you're living in a forest like this, um, the chances of getting covered up quickly enough uh, are not that great. Really. Right, and then also you're gonna have other animals coming to eat. If you have a dead animal lying on this forest floor, uh, predators and other animals will come and make use of the dead animal. And yeah. take it away, take away the soft parts number one and then the bones as well. Right. Huh. So the odds of an ancient life form ever becoming a fossil are extremely rare especially for terrestrial creatures that were left uncovered by sediment and available to scavengers. But the rarest fossils of all, perhaps, are ones where the animal's actual body parts were not replaced by other minerals like fossils, but actually preserved. Now, these rare remains can sometimes be discovered in ice, volcanic ash, or lava sediments. Or amber, an ancient tree resin. You know, the history of life on Earth is a story of complexity through time, more and more complexity through time. So the oldest time people uh, mention and have defined is called the Precambrian. 
and it's a time of very soft-bodied creatures. There are very few fossils from that period of time, very simple creatures, all in the ocean. Um, the next period after that is the Paleozoic era, and that is translates into the era of ancient life, and that's when uh, organisms were starting to get skeletons uh, and learning how to breathe air, and also plants were making their way on the land, and once the plants established themselves on land, um, insects and vertebrates came on the land. And then there's the Mesozoic era, which is the next era, that translates into the era of middle life, which is a seemingly simple way of describing the fantastic dinosaurs that lived during that period of time. Dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. Sweet. Why should we care about fossilized stuff millions of years old? Well, knowing the past can help us predict the future. Fossils also help us unravel global mysteries such as the great history and evolution of life, historic climate change, continental drift, plate tectonics, and ultimately what might be in store for us as creatures on a constantly changing planet. And what would that what would that be probably? Discovering the answer to Hazen's question is another reason to dig into the mysteries of ancient life and to never stop exploring your world. <laughs> <laughs>